Thank you. Uh -huh. <coughs> I'll, the last speaker usually summarizes all the key points of the previous three speakers, so I'll try to do that and put a practical aspect to it. February 20, 2022, Ukraine was invaded by Russia, and two or three months later, the port of Baku was filled with containers. Every single square meter, we were filled up with containers. At one point, we were handling about 5,000 containers. That was our peak. We could not handle any more. So what does this tell us? We, look, we need to look at the middle corridor, not from the port's perspective from which I'm working. I, I learned that lesson. We need to look at it from the perspective of a system. There are four components that needs to be addressed in defining the efficiency and capacity of the middle corridor. The first component is your railway infrastructure, your railway network, your equipment used to move the gauges because gauges in China and Turkey are smaller than the gauges used in the post-Soviet countries in Caucasia, Asia. <clears throat> the first development started of railway infrastructure started 25 years ago in 2011. Altinko Korgos created the stations for moving the gauge so that the wagons can be used in Kazakhstan from China. So you need to move it from a smaller gauge to a bigger gauge using rail mounted cranes by lifting the wagons up. The second key infrastructure development started in Kazakhstan in 2014. That's the Trans-Kazakhstan Railway Network, which reduces the distance between the borders of Korgos, Altenko, to Aktau by 1,000 kilometers. So the puzzles are coming together again. And what's next? We, are, we had the conflict between Armenia and Azerbaijan. This disrupted the road networks to Turkey from the Caucasus. So what did we do? We created or built, implemented the Baku Tbilisi cars. And that comes with the Altinko station, uh, sorry, Akahalaki station, which performed the same role as Altinko Korgos, moving the rail gauge again. Because in Turkey, as I mentioned, it's a smaller gauge. So all this you can see, infrastructure-wise, there are capacity issues. If your gauge check changing capacities are not there, that becomes a critical bottleneck, whether it is Altinko or whether it is Korgos. When the flood of containers came in from the Northern Corridor, there were few factors affecting that flow. Firstly, we were coming after COVID. The Maritime Silk Road was jammed. Rates were high. Rates were so high that it pulled the rates of moving containers from Korgos to Turkey, over 10,000 US dollars, which equal to the rates of EU's sea maritime routes. So that was to our favor. We were very happy. We were flooded with containers. All right? But could we handle it? You heard from our distinguished audience this morning of all the ongoing infrastructure developments in Kazakhstan, in Uzbekistan, supplementing the railway infrastructure. When you supplement the railway infrastructure, your capacity does not increase because there were still key bottlenecks that were not addressed. We should come away from this forum recognizing the need for intelligent, pointed investments in key bottlenecks that will address the capacity issue. 
First, we need to increase the speed for which we change the wagons. We need to increase the capacity. Why we say this? In 2021, 1.41 million containers were transversed across the Northern Corridor. And we say we want to handle 1.41 million. We cannot even handle 5% of that, which amounts to 70, around 70,000 TUs. So does the middle corridor become alternative? Gentlemen, what alternative if you handle only 70,000 TUs out of 1.5 million? There's no alternative. You still go back to your old ways unless we identify the key issues in our critical infrastructure. Increase the efficiency at the key borders of changing gauge. Better equipment, akaraki, lengthening the rows, two rows row in, two rows out now. But each row is 160 meters. Not much you can do. At that point in time when this infrastructure was built, it was enough. But now we look forward. And once we look forward, we address the issue. In fact, the Russian-Ukraine conflict did us a favor. It forces, it stress tests the system, and the bottlenecks were very clear to us. There was a transit council formed by the Azerbaijan government to look at these key issues. We visited Akahalaki, we visited Georgian railways. We wanted to see what were the bottlenecks. All right. So this is component one. Component two, because the middle corridor spans across the Caspian Sea, ports are involved. Handling capacities of ports are involved. All the ports along the middle corridor have to be aligned in terms of capacity. One of the biggest capacities now along the middle corridor is Georgian, which has capacity of 550,000 TUs. Georgian port 40. Right? Then it comes to us, port of Alat, 100,000 TUs. And we have Aktau, similar, 100,000 TUs. And we have Tukmanbashi, 700,000 TUs. We, in Azerbaijan, we recognize this. So we started planning now, and we are developing phase two, which will increase our capacity to 650,000 TUs, making it aligned with Georgia, Tukmanbashi. Aktau recognizes this too, and they're working close, closely with key investors. I think I will not say so much because I'm not with the Kazakh government, but I think they're working with key uh, companies like PSA. Samuk Invest is there also to look into increasing the capacity of Kurik and Aktau. Good, all moving in the right direction. So what's left next? Turkey. Do you think your containers can get across to Europe easily? Now? How? Is there a dedicated high-speed line for freight connecting Corgos to all the way, let's say, across Europe to London, to Spain, Madrid, to Duisburg? In the Northern Corridor, there's a line. Under one system. So, your container goes from Kazakhstan, across the Northern Red Wake, to Belarus, Poland, Duisburg, and you can know exactly when you arrive. But for the middle corridor, is it the same? Man, sometimes you don't know when a container will arrive. <laughs> really? I mean, I'm sorry to hear this. This is the reality check for us. We have to come out from here realizing what we need to do. Yes, the first part, we know potential represents opportunities. Opportunities represents us to realize the challenges. 
to overcome them. Turkey needs to come with a picture addressing with Azerbaijan, Georgia, Kazakhstan, and native maybe Turkmenistan to address this collectively in a trading block, I don't know what you call it, similar to what we do where I came from in Singapore, ASEAN, to create a unified rail network system, electrified, high-speed, sustainable, less carbon emissions, all the way from Point Korgos, which development started 25 years ago, all the way to Europe. Is China ready to move cargo to the middle corridor? They are. Their port, Liangangkwang, is in a very strategic position. They are in the Yangtze River economic delta together with a nearby regions of Beijing, which has a huge import cluster, which means that you can serve this two ways. You can export, and they are ready to import. Their middle income is growing. The opportunities are there. Everybody is correct in saying that there are opportunities. Everybody is correct in saying there are potential. But we have to realize this with a pointed strategy. No more macro outlook. Yes, we're going to do this and this within 15 days. Tell me one shipment that comes within 15 days in the last three months. Tell me. There are none. Not one. Now, in this forum, we are talking now, Turkey is one side. We have the Marimar Tunnel. Yes, we go in the Marimar Tunnel, we use it. But can we use it 24 times 7? No. So there's a capacity restraint there. There are good things being done, but on a certain level, we need to enhance it. Enhance it collectively, strategically, tactically, and in a planned, coordinated fashion with all the governments in the region looking at the same issues at the same time. And there's one more component left. We talk about Black Sea connectivity. Let me ask the forum, where are the vessels to connect Porti to Constanza, Gitromonox in Ukraine, or to Botgans? Where are the ferry vessels? They are ferry vessels, 30 years old, 40 years old. Are they cheap? No, they are expensive. So where's the compar compar competi competitive advantage of using that? None. Are there scheduled vessels, container carriers? They are. But they are on a pilot basis. We are still testing it. There's no schedule run. If there's no schedule run, how are you going to tell your customer when your containers are going to arrive? Nobody will use you, man. I come from operations, I ask these questions. I don't get the answers yet. But I realize that the challenges are there and we have the capacity to overcome them. We do. Otherwise, all of us will not be sitting here. The third component is, of course, the digitization. Anyone knows how and who to contact when you want to move a container from Xi'an to Mersing? Who you contact? Who? Is there a platform that I can sign on, key my requirements, Flag out a rate, and the computer tells you when it, your container is going to arrive, right like in the flight schedule. There's no platform doing that. None. So do you take a risk when you use the middle corridor? Yes, you take a big risk. So if you have to take a big risk, will you use it? Compared to the Maritime Silk Road, where there are already systems in place, to monitor, track, trace, and tell you when your containers are going to arrive. But all is not lost, because I know 
there are so many entities looking at this e-platform. There's the World Bank, there's OSCE, there's EU. Man, they're all looking at it. <laughs> but they need to come together to create an integrated solution. I tried to do this. I talked to OSC and EU and World Bank, and they came together, shared studies, and bo lo and behold, they came up with a concept called e-platform, a platform of platforms. That can work because it does not require you to develop your own systems at the same place. You put your custom systems, whether you're in Kazakhstan, I put my custom systems in Azerbaijan, okay? Put it in that platform. There's a router, there's intelligence in this, there's certain AI that picks out the information that you need and puts it to the next stage. But when you want to develop this, the question will be asked now, who's going to own this system? Ah, where, where the information is going to reside to? Ah, security issues. Who's going to benefit most from? Ah, political issues. So can it get done? Everybody stay back and look at each other. Oh man, too difficult, man. Let's put it at the next conference. So, I, I, I'm telling you from real life experience that I attended so many conferences. <laughs> but I will, because I see the vision, that's why I came to this country to work. I was picked up from my comfort zone and thrown to here in Singapore. I was from Singapore. I, vice president, I had my staff working for me. Everything was quick work, no challenges. I was bored. But here, the challenges are great. But the rewards are even greater. Because once you can realize the vision, you'll be like the old.